Hello. <laughs> Yeah. How are you doing? I'm alright. It's I'm an right. interesting time seeing you here at 6:33. <laughs> These are not ordinary times. <laughs> yeah, really, this is the best These example are not ordinary of times. <laughs> Ask not to be ordinary. So, times. Yeah, man. Yeah. Gentlemen, how are we doing? We are looking forward to the weekend, a very long one. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good morning. Yes. It, it rained heavenly last night. It depends on which part of town. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Which I find really strange. In, but that's the There right. wasn't a drop. Mm, but mm, if you go to a Shalibotre, a Denta, you go to a Shaiman, it rained cats and dogs. So Yesterday, when I go home from work, I was very surprised about yeah. and how much have, rain there was. And Nathan, you see, the rains have exposed the gullies. And look, I know I've said this so many times, mm-hmm. but Charlie, the Botre Road <laughs> from <laughs> School Junction to Santo. Especially Puma Junction. Hey! The one the famous Puma, Puma Junction. Junction there's some, ra- some pothole eh? mm-hmm. So when you enter your car, t- <laughs> and they put in the car, you say, Jesus. <laughs> Charlie, Puma is terrible. And the part is, and what was happening is that there's part of it, it's like old asphalt is there with sand uh, and yeah. things. That's always true. So terrible. sometimes the people coming have to wait for those who are going to pass uh, Charlie Chaka. But I thought some work was being done. They there. are doing gutters, and the gutters have also made the thing yama. So there's mud, there's. Yep. Charlie, sometimes you just want to leave your car and walk. Yeah, I say it all the time. Seventy percent of our traffic situation is caused by bad roads. You know, and because women oh, yeah, have yeah, to yeah, slow yeah, down. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's true. And, and you know, so Charlie, we beg. I don't know if there's interim road maintenance. That road is in a terrible shape. You know, <laughs> terrible shape. Anyway, so we have headlines for you. I don't know. I'll uh, start daily well, graphic. Yeah, let's start with the daily graphic. Now, daily graphics lead story. Security during Christmas. No holiday for police. They'll be alert to post election issues. The other one is on page 20. It says, Drivers impatience claims six lives in just 34. Oh, oh. This is an accident at a point in Takrade in the western region. Really, really tragic. Also, insurance bill passed to spare growth. And the back page public dessert wearing of face masks this is also on the daily graphic and this is really troubling all right uh the one story is very popular today uh, daily guide uh it has a police stop ndc mps march to ec mm-hmm. that story is in most of the newspapers this morning actually and there's also this one that says papa v boys for committal papa v, papa v, papa v. <laughs> papa v boys for committal and then teacher in court over countermand to fire oh lord uh, yeah. that's in the head uh, <laughs> yes in the headlines of the daily guide newspaper uh, if you go to the chronicle, when lawbreakers break the law, ACP Kwesi Fori insists NDC MPs did not notify police. Also, Harun Adisu, NDC should go to court with what? There's a photograph of the minority leader on the front page. And then Ogba Ami Selby denies masterminding Afeku's defeat. That's on the Chronicle front page as well. <laughs> All right, on the Ghanaian Times, EC swerves minority over election petition. NDC threatens to boycott its activities. Mm. And there's a story here on education. Government to decide school reopening December 30. And mm. uh, there's some uh, other story here about COVID-19 that says, observe Xmas in moderation mm. to avoid COVID-19 spikes. The new crusading Ghana was a photo of NDC MPs, most of them in masks, I should say, walking towards the EC. And the headline is, stop it! Police warn NDC MPs as they flout public order act. Sorry, on page three and ten. Also, government to ensure proper management of markets and concede defeat for sake of peace. Chief to Mahama and Ikums rake in ten point five billion CDs from December to June this year, despite COVID effect. <laughs> yes, the Ikum story is also on the headline of the uh, Finder newspaper, uh, and it says Ikums generates ten point five billion from June uh, to December twelve. Reopening uh, school reopening dates out December 30. COVID 19 task force briefing president on options. That's according to the Minister of Information, Kojo Pong and Chroma. And there's a story here that says 2020 has been gloomy, but wet while I see you uh, speaking. The there. Ghanaian publisher, government review management of markets, local government minister, Ikums generates 10.5 billion from December, uh, June to December. Also, minority in dirty confrontation with police. Meanwhile, EC on recess <laughs> till January 19, 2021. <laughs> hey, mate. Charlie? Yeah. <laughs> not January 4, too. Not January no, 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 10, 19. January 19, yeah. 2021. That's a long And MPP holds Thanksgiving service on Sunday. Uh, Business and Financial Times, 2020 business year in COVID-19, a review. That's on page three. Mm-hmm. Ruling with the hang parliament. A parliament promises to be an interesting one. And the Ikum story is here as well. 10.5 billion from June to December 20, despite COVID-19 impact on trade. 
The Daily Statesman has a question. Mills ruled with 40,000 margin, but Akufuado can't with 500,000? It's a question mark story on page two. Also, reopening of schools, president decides after December 30 cabinet meeting. I'd like to be a fly on the wall during that <laughs> meeting. It's probably the last cabinet meeting of this government yes, before yes. the before, next one before comes the in. Next yeah. one, yes. Yes. The Ghanaian Observer, NDC MPs brawl police as minority legislators storm EC office over election 2020. Mm. MPP to hold Thanksgiving service over election victory. Mm. And it, uh, it also there's another story here that says uh, Awuki lashes NDC, stop the street protests, and go to court over election grievances. Okay, moving to the publisher. The story says, I won't step down, want to meet tells MPP. And NDC MPs on rampage of a petition to Electoral Commission. Meanwhile, Jataba Ross at EC Boss, giving to the ultimatum to declare correct results. The informer, mm. Western countries to warn NDC, mm. uh, threaten travel ban on leadership if they, uh, in the event of chaos, sorry. Ghanaians urge to support government. That's another story. And uh, uh, There's another one here that says, as you can see, Kwesi Pratt, others fooling us, NDC progressives declare. The Herald talks about EC. Inexperienced and arrogant EC bosses continue to exhibit impunity. Offer citizens no explanation over irregularities. Take break, leaving temporary staff unpaid. That's on the front page. Also, Tsunami awaiting MPP executives after poor show at 2020 polls. Jama on to me and Abronye DC. Under Abronye DC. Under pressure to resign. And Okoboy created deep cracks and bitter factions in the Jukuku. That's also in the Herald. Let's go online, Nathan. Well, if you go online, uh, citynewsroom.com says 130 MPs will not return to parliament in 2021. Mm -hmm. Rescind your decision. To go on recess, CSOs to EC. Mm -hmm. NDC is mm -hmm. insisting we want Techiman South seat by 293 votes. Mm. Withdraw from a Japa deal, Transparency International edges UK financial firms. Gosh. And um, EC say minority did not give them prior notice yes, for presentation yeah, of the other. petition. Now let me take you draw online whilst you take us to other places. We want Techiman South seat by 293 votes. NDC demands EC's recollection of results also ndc mp is threatening to boycott akufado's inauguration if techiman south results are not recollated meanwhile the ec says we weren't properly notified about minorities petition this is a statement they sent in and if you go to star fm leaf story we didn't receive minorities petition notice on time this is from the ec i have the statement here also teacher charge of a to market fire trying to read that already and NDC MPs march to EC headquarters for election results. That's what we've already given you as well. The Ghana News Agency also leads with NDC Parliamentary Caucus unable to present petition to EC. Minority demands recollation of results, threatening to boycott Akufado inauguration. And police cleared the air on transfer of assaulted police officer okay. from a Juma. Citybusinessnews.com says stakeholders charged to eliminate barriers likely to impede success of after. Permits issued for importation of maize to feed poultry at Greek ministry. Market fires. Guta demands compensation for affected traders. And uh, it says, returning economy to path of fiscal consolidation critical. Mm. That's according to the BOG. And the BBC says, Trump regrets wasteful coronavirus stimulus bill. Oh, Trump. <laughs> <laughs> And um, U.S. sues Walmart for alleged role in opioid crisis. Mm. And Israel heads to election as unity government uh, falls. So let me start with Nana Kunedi Ajima in the graphic. Minority walks to EC to present petition, but EC says it did not receive prior notice. So this story sort of encapsulates all the various angles of the walk and then the activities that happened before they did their uh, attempt to present. So it says the minority in parliament yesterday staged a walk from parliament house to the headquarters of the EC to present a petition demanding the immediate collation of the parliamentary and presidential election results from all the 266 polling stations in the Tetim and South constituency in the Bono East region, in accordance with the law. Adorned in black and red attire and led by Minority Laharun Idrisu and Minority Chief Whip Alaji Muntakam Mubarak Mohammed, legislators began the work from the House about 10.30 a.m. to the EC office, a distance of about a kilometer. The protesting MPs were, however, blocked by the police at the ridge roundabout, preventing the MPs from proceeding to the EC office. Now... The resistance by the police appeared to have infuriated the minority MPs who, in disapproval, shouted on top of their voices while they tried fruitlessly to force their way through. In the ensuing confrontation, some of the MPs, including the minority leader, were seen being physically pushed back by the policemen. They, however, stood their ground and insisted on their right to proceed to the EC office to present the petition to the chairperson. Eventually, minority leader had his way, or the minority had its way to the EC, but could not present the 21-point petition because neither the chairperson, Mrs. Jimensa, nor any official was around to receive it. 
Out of frustration, Mr. Drizzy read out the petition after which he appealed to any senior police officer present to receive it for onward presentation to the chairperson. But this fell on deaf ears. Consequently, Mr. Drizzy and the team went back to parliament. Now, the, then, of course, the details are given. We heard this. Mr. Drizzy says they will also not accord the EC a hearing when they come to parliament. Meanwhile, the Electoral Commission has issued a statement saying that they didn't get a prior notification. That story is on citynewsroom.com. Let me just read that. The Electoral Commission has denied allegations that it outrightly refused to receive the petition from the minority caucus in Parliament, explaining why no official was available to receive the petition. The Commission said it was given too short a notice by the minority. And the statement says, for the record, the Commission wishes to inform the general public that it did not receive prior notice of the said presentation of the petition from the minority caucus. They said they got the, uh, the notification too late. Okay. Now, the other issue here is that they are also on leave. Yes. That yes, and some problem. CSOs uh, have been speaking on that now. Yeah, some civil society organizations have called on the Electoral Commission <laughs> to review its decision to go on break hmm. following the organization of the 2020 elections. Hmm. According to them, they are pressing and critical issues hmm. from the election that requires the EC to remain in service yeah. and they cannot afford to take a break. Now, there's a statement, which we, or portion, a portion that reads, hmm. quote, Given the current post-election context and the matters arising, some of which might require their attention, we find it unacceptable that the EC yeah. should be shutting down at this critical moment uh, with the, and without any clarification to the public of the it's alternative so arrangements shocking. that have been put in place. Now, the EC announced that it would go on break Have you seen today. the EC statement? So, the, st the statement is, is, a, is a, like an internal memo and the uh, publisher has it. It says, the Electoral Commission will go on break today. It's expected to resume on Tuesday, January 19th. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a friend of mine who ate on rice and slept December 23 <laughs> and woke up January 15th. <laughs> hey, following the, successful, following the successful and peaceful conduct of the 2020 presidential and parliamentary election, management has decided that the commission will break for Christmas and New Year on Wednesday, 23rd December, which is today, and resume duty on Tuesday, 19th January. Wow. Hey, hey! Actually, <laughs> it's a long break. No, but like, how with all these controversies, mm -hmm. results coming, CSOs have even asked the EC to hold a press conference to explain some of the discrepancies. Yes. They haven't done this. They just issue statements. You know, this is actually a very important time for their work because the results have been disputed. I made the leave, yeah. and it's not to fourth January. This is January nineteenth. The whole commission. That's it. Everybody is gone. Hey, I, 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 yeah. Even Charlie, personally, I find the the, the 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 excuse that they got the. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, 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 it's quite, it's quite yeah. strange because, I mean, given the sensitivity yes. nature of the, the situation, they could have at least yes. and you, taken and it, even if it came There's no official in the EC with all the commissioners or anybody to receive a petition. I mean, what does it take to receive a petition? You know that I mean? Yeah. EC should yeah, tell us. Anyway, so anyway, it's like, a bit strange. Yeah. Uh, the Ikum story, yes. uh, it runs across most of the newspapers. I've got some details here from the finder. Mm. And it says, data from the Ghana Revenue Authority shows that the total revenues generated by the mm. integrated customs management systems uh, for the authority amounted to 10.5 billion between June and December 12, 2020. Mm. This includes some 7.6 billion from the customs division of the GRA from import and export of goods into and out of Ghana. The rest constitutes revenues generated by domestic tax revenue division of the GRA, raising some 2.7 billion. And non GRA revenues, which is also hovering around a little over 140 million. Mm. Now, according to the GRA, the previous vendors were generating a monthly average amount of some 940 million however apart from june 2020 when revenue generated through ecoms dropped by almost four percent below what was generated same period 2019 due to the challenges which docked the deployment of tema the current data has seen an upward trend mm. and this is the upward trend comparing year-on-year -year figures the previous vendors generated duty payments of 949 million hmm. for July 2019 as against 1.1 billion oh, yeah, ECOMS generated money, for July you, 2020. You, you <laughs> <laughs> billions, billions. Yeah, billions. Uh, but it's progress. You know, we, oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, we, we, we keep talking about mm. the impact of some of these new systems, and clearly it's showing in the upward uh, revenue generation. I wanted to actually go back to Parliament because we, we haven't run out of. So the second story. So th when the minority went to the EC and came back. Yeah. They then held a press conference mm. to explain and add up the pink sheets for the Tichiman South constituency. They call it public coalition. Good. So the story is on City News. We won Tichiman South seat by 293 votes. 
Now, I'm going to read that story. It says, the left NDC insists that its parliamentary candidate, Christopher Bayere Vasonti, is the legitimate winner of the Techiman South constituency seat in the just-ended parliamentary elections. The party says it won the election by 293 votes. And although the EC has declared the MPP's Martin J. Mensah Corsa the winner, the NDC said the commission's declaration was both flawed and illegal. According to the party, there was no collision of results, and so the EC's announcement of the MPP candidate as victor threatened Ghana's enviable democracy, hence its rejection of the results. Now, the minority leader having addressed at a press conference on Tuesday, so this is after the walk, mm -hmm. to present the pink seat from each polling station in the constituency as a basis for their position, says that the, the government is working to deny the NDC a parliamentary majority. Now, this was a PowerPoint presentation with all kinds of numbers. <laughs> now, the, and the presentation was made by the deputy majority minority leader, uh, James Averji. So when they finished their tally, they got 50,306 votes for Christopher Bayere and Martin Ajemi and Sakonsa, based on the NDC's tally, got 50,013, mm. a difference of 293. And there were also 919 rejected votes. So they are basically saying that this is one of the reasons why they walked to the EC. They need a recollation of the Techiman South results. In fact, other people are saying that they say if there's no recollation, they would boycott the in presidential inauguration. I don't know if you have that story somewhere. So they basically, ask, it's not just a question of the Techiman South. They're, they're threatening to boycott the, um, the the main election. If you, if 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 yeah. The, the, not the election, the, 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 the swearing so of the... I have that story here on the Ghanaian yes, Times. It's also on GNA. Please go there for us. Yes, okay. uh, page 17, uh, and it says that um, uh, EC swears minority over election petition. NDC threatens to boycott EC's activities. Uh, so it goes on and on and on about the... Uh, EC not showing up to, to, to take the, the petition. And then he says, uh, it, uh, Haruna Dusi, he indicated that the party would not accept the declaration made in favor of the MVP and asked the EC to publicly accumulate the results of the Chairman South in accordance with the laws of Ghana. And he has a quote from him that says, we are demanding that pursuant to the provision of the public elections regulations, CI 127, all results of polling centers of the Chairman South be certified collated, aggregated, and declared. And whoever wins, let him be the winner. But we will not accept the declaration that was done in the absence of our candidates, mm. agents, and certified results of polling stations in Techman South. Now, according to the minority leader, who is the MP for Tamale South, it was the first time election results had been changed severally mm. by the EC, for which reason the NDC still stood its stance of, reje uh, of rejecting the results. Now, uh, he goes on here and he says, Mr. Samuel Nati George, mm -hmm. MP for Ningo Pram Pram, said the EC had disrespected the minority caucus by using the police to restrain them from Ali. presenting their petition. For this reason, hmm. he said the NDC would continue to embark on demonstrations and mm -hmm. would also turn its back on the EC and the security in parliament, stating that the party would, in the next parliament, be the majority. And they also say they will not attend the inauguration in January if this continues. Now, let's go to some road issues before we come back possibly to health. Drivers in patients claim six lives in just 34. This is a tragic <laughs> story. Page 20, Daily Graphic. Really, Doche, really tragic. Kobla Akloba to, from Apoan and uh, Jemama Akivos in Ho. Six persons lost their lives and 34 sustained varying degrees of injury in two separate accidents involving vehicles colliding when they attempt to overtake other vehicles went bad in the early hours of yesterday. In one of the incidents, five persons died at the Tefle motorway junction in South Town District of the Volta region when a blue Ford Transit bus crashed headlong with a Hyundai Universe bus. The remains of the deceased, four of whom have been identified, have been conveyed to the Sugakope District Hospital for morgue for preservation and autopsy. In the other incident or accident which happened at Gassem Estate near Apoin, or Apoa, or Apoin, in the Takradi Agona <laughs> and Kwanta Road in the western region, uh, one person died while four others sustained serious injuries with a, when a pickup driven by an alleged impatient driver, Francis Dazi, collided with a fully loaded fuel tanker. The persons identified uh, have been named in the story. They were pronounced dead upon arrival at Ifyang Quanta Regional Hospital. The rest were rushed to Kwesimitin Polyclinic from where they were in, those in critical condition were referred to the regional hospital. Then the diesels are given. And then Sergeant Doug Bache, who is the Volta Regional Police Commander, is cautioning drivers to be measured and patient on the road. The desire to overtake wrongly, arrive early and make more sales in the end leads mm, to needless mm, crashes mm, and loss mm. of lives. Sergeant Dubache, please say it again. <laughs> and then Commander of Western Regional MTTD Chief Superintendent Richard Apia also told the graphic that the accident at Apoa occurred about 5.30 a.m. last Monday involving the pickup and he gives the details. And there was a fully lowered fuel tanker 
driven by one Sylvia Udum, coming from the opposite direction towards Takwa, coming face to face with the fuel tanker. The driver of the pickup owned by G4 Security was left with no option but to run into the fuel tanker, killing one of its mm. occupants with four others injured. Oh, wow. Lord. This is really troubling. <laughs> it is. Uh, that story is in the finder as well. Five dead, others injured in road crash near Sogakope. But this story, Bernard, will interest a lot of people going into the new year. Mm -hmm. uh, it's on page five of the finder. It says, DVLA cautions against late registration. Hmm. And we see a lot of DV cars around. It said the Driver and Vehicle Licensing Authority has cautioned the public that only vehicles that have gone through the do pre-registration process mm. will be registered during the annual mass registration of vehicles in early 2021. Mm -hmm. It further urged vehicle owners to desist from relying on middlemen to avoid being swindled. Yeah, yeah. In a press release <laughs> issued by the authority, it advised the public to follow processes in the pre-registration of their vehicles in 2021. It added that mm -hmm. the pre-registration of vehicles will be from now till December 31, mm -hmm. 2021. The authority had learned six steps the public should go through to register their vehicles, noting that you must have a tax identification number for the registration. So, no thing. No registration. <laughs> now, there's a very interesting story here on citynewsroom.com. We draw from a Japan deal. Transparency International edits UK financial firms. This story is by Jonas Nyabo. It says, International Anti-Corruption Organization, Transparency International, is urging financial institutions and lawyers in the UK who are involved in the controversial Japan mineral royalty deal to withdraw their interest. The organization has also written to the UK Financial Conduct Authority, FCA, to reject the application to list the Japan Realities Limited on a London Stock Exchange if concerns about corruption in the deal are not satisfactorily addressed. Then finally, there's a concern about when schools will reopen. In the graphic, uh, private some school owners are asking government for when they would reopen schools. And I think government attempted a response by saying that in their 30 December cabinet meeting, yes. they will have they will that particular answer. decision taking. So let's just go through that quickly. This is Kojo Oponkrumah being quoted in a number of newspapers that government will have a final cabinet meeting on December 30, at which meeting the date for reopening will be announced. This story is in the daily statesman so those of you have been asking when schools will reopen let's go to the president akufuado is expected to make a decision on the reopening of schools in the country after a cabinet meeting slated for december 30. his decision will be based on relevant information gleaned from various briefings as well as critical lessons from the temporary school reopening alternative initiatives for final year students both in secondary and tertiary minister information kojo ponkruman said government is still gathering reports and scenarios on the outcome out of which a decision will be made so parents we just have a week today's 23rd mm -hmm. so december 30 is a week today yes we'll, we'll know find out what when our means. children will go to school and what form the school will take yes so that's the information coming through okay all right thank you very much bernard thank you very much friends so that was the newspaper review mm. um on the city breakfast show at seven we have the city business news for you the city breakfast show rise above